every program that you're seeing here through these days at WPPI will be posted at an ICON uh, event space page. So make sure you go there if you missed anything. We're going to keep it going. We've got Anya Auntie coming up second. But let me introduce our next speaker. She is a fashion photographer and director out of Texas. We met several years ago, maybe about five, six years ago, I, I forget, but at a WPPI show, she had her book and we were all blown away. Let me introduce the Nikon Theater stage, Dixie Dixon. Hello, what's going on guys? <laughs> oh my goodness, thank you all for coming. How's the show going so far? Is everyone having fun? Awesome, I am just so freaking excited to be here. So if you don't know me, I am Dixie Dixon, and I want you guys to be extremely real with me right now. How many of you struggle with the business side of photography? Yes, lots of you guys, okay. How many of you guys find the business side of photography to be really boring? Any of you? <laughs> okay. And how many of you have actually thought about quitting photography because the business side is so tough? Any of you? Okay, I get ya. I was actually a business major at TCU, um, but I love the creative side of photography much more than the business. However, I think in my opinion, you can make your business of photography as creative as your photography itself. And that's what I'm gonna talk a lot about today is the business side. So how many of you guys have actually seen me speak before? Any of you? Okay, so today it's gonna to be a little bit different. We're gonna be going more into the business side and figuring out how to master that so you can really make a living doing what you love. So the first thing I want you guys to write down is you need to define and ask yourself, what does success mean for you? Okay, I want you guys to really think about this because whatever that answer is, is what is gonna guide your photography business and creating a lifestyle out of your brand and what you wanna do for a living. So for me, I love fashion photography and my ultimate vision is basically to have a blast working with different creatives, to shoot for all kinds of commercial clients and to travel the world. So that has been my laser sharp focus as I have grown my photography business and really created a business doing what I love. So how many of you guys shoot weddings? Awesome, lots of wedding photographers, obviously, it's awesome. How many of you are interested in commercial work? Any of you? Okay, cool. So what I love about commercial work is you're working with companies that have slightly bigger budgets than a lot of your you know, smaller clients and portrait clients and whatnot. So adding a little bit of commercial work to your photography is not a bad idea. So we're gonna get into a lot of that today. Um, if you don't know about me, I shoot a lot of fashion, a lot of lifestyle type of work. Um, here's a list of all of my clients. Um, so I do a lot of different productions for these type of clients from like Nikon to Disney, Florsheim Shoes, Virgin Pulse. So we put together productions for all these different types of clients and it's been a really fun process. And keep in mind, I only started out with one camera, one lens. I had no vision when I started out. I had no idea how I was gonna make this happen. So starting out in this business, I really, it's been trial and error. So I wanna go through a bunch of tips, but first I wanna show you guys a quick behind the scenes video on what it is we do and bringing vis different visions to life.
All right, we have a lot of fun on set, as you guys can tell. How many of you guys do some behind the scenes videos? Any of you? Awesome. I think it's such a really amazing tool to really showcase what, you, what it's like to work with you on set. It's a really fun process. So let's get into business boot camp. Um, we're going to start out and just talk a little bit about gear. How many of you guys are Nikon shooters? Woo! <laughs> That's awesome. I have shot Nikon my entire career, and I have always loved the detail and the crispness of the lenses and the bodies that they have. I'm primarily shooting with the Nikon Z7. How many of you guys use that camera? of you. So we shoot both stills and videos with that, and the result is stunning. There's so much detail. There's so much beauty in these files. Um, so I've always been a really long-term user of the brand. So I love the Z7. We'll put the Z7 on a gimbal, shoot video. You can also shoot stills with it. And just the detail and the depth of the files, I think, is really incredible out of these new mirrorless cameras. So it's a really fun tool. This is a recent shoot in France um, and using natural light, very simple stuff. And I just love bringing that to life. How many of you guys love prime lenses? Woo! Oh my gosh, I am obsessed with primes. And the reason is, is they are incredibly, incredibly sharp. So much of fashion photography is very controlled. So I like to be my own walking zoom so that I can create really tack sharp images and just have beautiful bokeh in the background. So one of my favorite lenses, how many of you guys have the 105? Any of you? Ah, that's my favorite, favorite portrait lens. I definitely recommend getting that lens if you're shooting headshots and portraits. And I always wear a hat when I shoot. I'm a big nerd. I feel more creative when I have a hat on when I am working or shooting or whatnot. So I'll, how many of you guys have labeled all your lenses in your bag? This is a really, really important tool. So you can easily grab lenses as you're shooting. So um, I had an assistant. His name's Eric. He's an amazing guy. He actually created this set of lens caps for me. These are all spray painted really nicely. So you can easily access all of your lenses you know, when you're doing a shoot. Because as you know, shooting can be kind of stressful. You're kind of in the zone. This makes it a lot easier. So definitely label your gear. It's really important. Always have insurance. That's a really big part of business. Um, I use TCP insurance. And the reason why is they get the location um, COIs back within the hour. So it's really easy to use. They don't take forever to get it back, and they're really easy to work with. I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. I'm just showing you guys um, the different things that I use in business. You know, I do a lot of different things. I love natural light. I love creating personal work that really is beautiful and, and is nice. And I love that fashion photography and bringing to life that vision within the images. I use a lot of different kinds of um, Photoshop, and I tend to keep it pretty simple. I just like to really touch up the models and make the scene look really beautiful and bring it to life. I pretty much like to shoot things how they are. I don't do a lot of compositing or anything like that in my work. I like to keep it pretty simple. How many of you guys get model releases? OK, good. <laughs> this is so, so important. Um, you can get this off of Getty Images' site. They can actually. Um, you know, have your models sign this on every shoot. And the reason why I always get model releases is because if someone wants to license your work later, you need to have these model releases so that they can use the images for what they need to. So I actually ended up licensing some of my first work that I ever did to a couple of different companies. And having model releases allowed me to do that. So always get those signed for whatever client you're working with. It's really, really important. How many of you guys back up your work? OK, good. <laughs> Always have three duplicate backups. That's such an important tool. Um, I use these G drives on set, and they're a really amazing tool because they're incredibly fast. Um, and then so I always back up my work in the studio to a bunch of big hard drives. You want to have three duplicate backups of all your clients' work, or else it doesn't exist. Because if you lose one hard drive or something happens in a fire or something like that, you always want to be able to have your work backed up. Always really important, all these business things. So the first thing you need to do business-wise is you really need to shoot personal work that sets your soul on fire. That is the main thing in order to create a business doing what you love. You really got to focus on that personal work. For me, I love photographing people and fashion, so I've always shot that kind of personal work. So I started out actually shooting for free, just models and friends. I used Model Mayhem to grow my business. And I ended up building a portfolio that basically attracted the kind of clients that I was looking for. So in order to attract the kind of clients you want, you've got to go out and shoot that kind of work and then show it. 
So I'll show this to different boutiques, designers, um, things like that, different clients that I want to shoot for that fit my vision. And you know, a new project of mine, this is actually a really, this, I've never showed this before. This is a new project. Um, I'm wanting to show the beautiful connection between models and animals. How many of you guys love animals? Oh, I love animals. Um, so I'm wanting to bring that to life. Um, and this was a really fun recent project. I did this a few weeks ago. And we were able to work with this beautiful giraffe. His name is Gerald. And he was such a stud. However, he actually ate one of my lenses. <laughs> I was so, so, I was actually laughing because it was worth it for the picture, but I, I literally had a lens that was in the grass in his cage um, that my assistant forgot to pick up and I forgot to pick up. And I came back and it was gone. I didn't know where my lens was. We were really worried that the giraffe swallowed the lens. Um, and so we were looking all over for it. And little did we know, we looked in this little pail of water inside of his cage, and he had dropped the lens inside the pail of water. <laughs> and so this is why you need to have insurance, guys. <laughs> but you know, it's all worth it for the shot, and uh, it's always an adventure getting to shoot with animals. You never know what they're going to do. I think I particularly like the black and white, but we also have a color edit as well. And then there were uh, two other giraffes. Um, this giraffe's name is Harriet and it's Baby Joy, and they're all very beautiful animals to work with. Um, the boy giraffe was actually an orphan, so this amazing owner kind of brought them into his home and has a big barn for him. It was just a really, really fun shoot um, to get and create personal work. So how many of you guys shoot a lot of personal work? Okay, good, because I say you need to be shooting personal work, I would say one to two times a month to keep yourself inspired and creative and not just shooting that client work. I think it's really important. So here's a little, bit, um, a little blurb about this shoot. It was a really fun one. All right. So one thing about photography, it's interesting because there is no person like you, and that is your superpower. And the reason I say that is you can have the same model, same location, and 10 different photographers shooting, and you can end up with such different results. And that's what I find so beautiful about photography, is that everyone has a different vision, a different way that they see the world. And I love locations. I love shooting on different locations because you always get a different vibe, a different light. This is in Provence in France. How many of you guys have been over to France? Maybe you? Oh my gosh, I just eat up that location. Everywhere in Europe is so beautiful. And you know, just capturing the different outfits and the models, I'm always thinking about color. Color is a big part of my work. And so I will literally think about the location and what color the background is, and then I'll have the model dress in like a complementary color. So yellow and purple are complementary, and they're across from each other on that color wheel. And so you want to think about that when you're shooting and you're dressing your portrait clients and things like that. Um, I love that color and bringing that to life and the different details and whatnot. So we do a lot of different kinds of shoots. This was for the Z7 campaign. This was one of my favorite, favorite locations. It was actually a library on the top of this old abandoned building. And we actually had to sign releases that we wouldn't sue if we fell through the floor. So it's always an adventure going to these different crazy locations and shooting. It's really fun. So how many of you guys shoot model portfolios? Any of you? OK, cool. So these are really great. Even if you're shooting weddings or portraits, all of you can work with signed models. And all you have to do is contact a modeling agency and say, hey, look, I'm looking to build my fashion portfolio. Even if you're just shooting weddings and portraits, it's a really good idea to add some cool fashion shots to your website to attract new clients. And modeling agencies will actually send their models 
for you to shoot. And it's basically a big collaboration because the models need the pictures. You need the pictures for your website. And it ends up being a really great tool. And you don't have to pay for them. And so it ends up being this great collaboration. Now, keep in mind when you're shooting model portfolios, they like to keep it very simple and very natural. The reason is, is the modeling agency is in the business to showcase the model. So you don't want to have all kinds of crazy makeup and stuff like that because they really want to see the actual model. So keeping it pretty natural, pretty lifestyle and fun is a really a really big tool. So one thing to keep in mind is to, in this business, you've got to really figure out what you personally love, and then you need to figure out how to outsource the rest. Does that make sense to you guys? So I love the shooting, OK? I love the shooting. I don't as much love the retouching, so I've started outsourcing a lot of my retouching. Um, I use Pratik a lot. And I also don't love the accounting, the bookkeeping, and aspects of this business. So I outsource a lot of that stuff. So I have a bookkeeper I work with and these different people. And one thing to keep in mind when you're just getting started, you can actually trade services. So you could say, hey, you know, an accountant, I'll photograph your family portraits if you'll help me with my accounting. There's always a ways to work around it. So you really need to outsource those things that you don't love to do so that you can actually focus on what you love. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah, it's definitely a really big tool. So if you're interested in commercial work, I do a lot of different kinds of productions. And this has all been through trial and error and learning and a lot of Googling. <laughs> so we'll do an estimate for a shoot. And it's a lot of different people involved in these commercial productions. But we use a, a thing called Blinkbed. It's a software in order to create estimates for commercial clients. And it's a really great tool to organize your production, get it all ready to go. Um, and this is a lot of questions, but these are the 21 questions that I ask every client before I go into a commercial production. Um, this is from Agency Access. If you guys just Google Agency Access, 21 questions to estimate a job. These are the questions you need to be asking your clients if you're interested in commercial and fashion work. There's just so many things that go into it. I'm still learning this process. And so I actually ended up hiring a consultant to help me with estimating. And her name was Lynn Kyle. So she would help me estimate these different commercial jobs. And she would basically run me through it. I'd pay her hourly to help me estimate. And this helped me learn how to estimate these different things for different clients and things like that. So you can always hire a consultant. There's always ways to work around it using Google. Um, so I'm very resourceful, and I ask a lot of questions. And I think that's a really big part of this industry. So how many of you guys work with a team? Any of you? Awesome. I love it. I call my team the dream team. And so I work with a lot of different folks. We have a producer on set. This is sort of a time lapse of the different people involved in creating these productions and bringing them to life. So a producer will basically create the schedule for the day. So she'll have all the models there at the certain time. We'll have each shot scheduled throughout the day. Because with advertising photography, so much goes into it. And so you have to get a certain amount of shots within the day. So she has it organized. She's actually in the center. Her name's Nancy. I work with her a lot. And I just actually hired her full time two years ago. So she's the only employee that I have. Otherwise, everyone else is contract work. And that keeps my overhead really low. And I think that's a really big part of starting out in the commercial industry. So we'll have hair, makeup, wardrobe, styling, um, all these different people. And I want you guys to keep in mind that I just started out shooting with me and a model. And this has all been grown through trial and error and trying to figure out this industry. And it's been a really crazy process. I wish I had like two hours to go through the whole process. But in business in particular, I want you guys to make decisions this way. And this is what I'm focusing on this year. When you're making decisions in your business, if it's not a hell yes, it's a no. OK? I don't want any maybes. If a client comes to me and I'm like, oh, I think they might be kind of tough to work with, whatnot, it's a no. So think about that when you're creating your business and you're bringing your business to life and saying yes to different things that come up. So if it's not a hell yes, it's a no. And if you go by that, you're going to be attracting the right clients. You're going to be doing your passion projects. And I think that's a really important thing. So for me, I started out shooting for a TV show on HDNet television, um, shooting swimsuit models. This was a really fun shoot. This was definitely a hell yes, I have to do this. Um, so I spent four years doing that. And that's really how I kind of got my start in the commercial industry. And this is all through just me meeting a producer who was a friend of mine. And they needed a photographer for the show. So all these serendipitous things will come together and kind of create your career. Um, this is another really important business tip. Basically, 80% of your profit comes from 20% of your clients. 
So what does that tell you? You need to focus and figure out, figure out which 20% of your clients are causing 80% of your revenue, and you need to really focus on those clients. Um, also, it's kind of interesting to think about, but 20% of your effort causes 80% of your results. So you need to focus on that 20%. I also heard that we wear 20% of our closet. So you really need to focus on the 20% is going to cause that 80%. Um, so think about those clients. Think about really you know, focusing on them. And you're going to really end up with great results. So I do a lot of different kind of lifestyle work. I don't just shoot fashion. In Dallas, I'm based. That's where I'm based. It's really hard to just shoot fashion. So I do a lot of cool lifestyle work. This was for Nikon. Um, this was for a hair company. This is a really fun brand that's based in Texas. And then I shoot for a lot of different ad agencies. Pharmaceutical companies have really great budgets. So we work with a lot of pharmaceutical companies doing like, this was for a hospital, but it's still got that fashion type of vibe. And you know, this is all from just putting out the kind of work that I want to shoot. Lifestyle is a really big thing in the commercial industry. This is for Margaritaville. It's a hotel. And they just opened a new water park. So just kind of thinking about the brands and how you want to bring them to life is really fun and important. I also shoot catalogs. But all these are kind of under that fashion umbrella. And this was for Virgin. This was uh, one of Richard Branson's many companies. I love Richard Branson. He's like such an inspiration in business. Um, so that was a really fun shoot. And my favorites are always the ones where the client comes to you for your vision and then hires you to, to execute that. So that's definitely my favorite thing. You know, it's amazing to me that you can blow up these Nikon images to be billboard size. Isn't that awesome? How many of you guys have been published? Any of you? Sweet. Isn't that the coolest feeling in the world? It's such a fun industry, and you get to create so many cool things. So this was actually for cellulite therapy, all right? So I shoot a lot of different kinds of things, and a lot of them kind of merge that fashion and that video aspect. So they created these cool gifts for the campaign. It's super simple, um, but you know, this is what, these are the kinds of jobs that pay really well in the commercial industry. So keeping in mind, this is my favorite campaign, favorite recent one. This was for Nikon for the Z7 campaign and working with mirrorless. One of the biggest challenges, I think, was shooting this. And we weren't able to work with the camera until the day of the shoot. So it's always like a super stressful, kind of high pressure thing. But it's amazing that they let us bring it to life. And I'd love to show you guys that behind the scenes. That's definitely the favorite shoot recently. 
So one thing to consider when you're getting into business is you want to keep your overhead really low. And I was just out of college. I literally got an investment job right out of school, and I ended up turning it down at the advice of my mentor. He was like, you need to pursue photography before you get locked in a lifestyle that you can't support. When you start a business, it's really tough. You know, you're going to have to figure out ways to work things. And for me, I had to jump right into photography. I ended up turning down that investment job. And I haven't looked back since. I've been doing this like 10 years now. Um, so it's definitely been a fun adventure. But a really great thing is to keep your overhead really low when you're starting out. So you can share studio spaces. That's a really important tool. So to keep that overhead low. Rent lighting gear whenever you need it. I rent a lot of gear still for different productions. And then I bill it back to the client that I'm shooting. Um, and then always live below your means. That's definitely a big part of it. So we'll, we'll literally rent locations wherever we go, because every different production requires a different kind of studio. And for portraits, you can figure out ways to do this. You know, a lot of free locations out there. How many of you guys use Airbnb? Um, it's a really great place to look for locations. You know, it's a really great tool. So we'll use all different kinds of things. There's so many ways to bring these productions to life. And if you think about it, how many of you guys have read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? Any of you? Such a great book. Um, habit number two, begin with the end in mind. That's a really, really important part of business and photography. You have to begin with the end in mind. What is your end goal? All right, if your end goal is to make 150K a year, you need to think about how to make that happen, right? So if you think about it, you want to make 150K, whatever it is. Hopefully you, want to, hopefully you want to make more than that. You divide that by 12. That's $12,500 a month. How can you make that? You can shoot every day for $500 a day. You can shoot four weddings every weekend throughout that month for $3,000. You got to think about it in that way um, so it really simplifies. So think about your end goal for the year and then set goals accordingly because you can definitely do this. So what allows you to charge higher prices in photography? Anyone? Your brand. This is why you need to be building your brand and creating this experience with your clients. Um, gosh, I have so much more to go into, but I know we're running out of time. Um, your brand basically needs to be very cohesive. You want to build a brand that really speaks your soul and really showcases your personality. And you want everything to be really cohesive from your website to the fonts you use to the colors that you use, all these different things, the communication on set. All of these things build your brand and your story so people know what they're getting into when they get to work with you. So I talk a lot about creating your experience for your clients. You want to leave the shoot and having everyone feeling a lot better about themselves than when they started. And I think that's a really big part of photography. I love that connection with people, and that's what I'm so passionate about. So if everyone has an amazing experience on set, that's going to really keep them coming back. That's what's going to make clients want to work with you over and over and over again. So I have a lot of repeat business and a lot of repeat clients. And that's what I really, really love about this industry is getting able to bring those visions to life, um, creating for cool clients, working with really fun people, and you know, bringing that to life. This is for a designer essay. She's an amazing designer. We just did a documentary on her. And it's amazing how this industry kind of ebbs and flows and creating different things for different people. How many of you guys have Instagram? OK, good. <laughs> it's a big, big part of your brand. You definitely want to have an Instagram because it seems to drive a lot of traffic to your work, especially for weddings and portraits. And I try to post like two to three times a week. And a lot of people do a lot more, which I think is great. For me, you know, the editing and the production and takes so long that sometimes you know, it's just tough. So creating a buzz about your marketing, you'll want to do editorial submissions, um, getting BTS videos and stories. Um, you want to do some promo styled shoots and also enter contests. How many of you guys are entering, entering contests? Awesome. The beauty about contests is not necessarily um, winning. The beauty of contests is having the judges see all your work. So I will enter advertising contests. We entered um, the advertising awards. And I actually had a commercial win a gold advertising award. And so all those judges got to see it in the industry that I'm interested in shooting. So we do a lot of different you know, things for magazines. You can look it up and see how you can you know, show your submissions. And magazines can pick it up. And then people are going to find out about you that way. It's a really, really great tool. I'm just trying to throw all this stuff at you guys. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, so this is the commercial that ended up winning the gold advertising award. How many of you guys have heard of Poopery? Any of you? OK, have you all seen this? Commercial? OK, a couple of you have. So this was a vision I had. Like I was in the shower, and I came up with this concept. Because Poopery asked me to come up with this idea for their 
um, bathroom spray, believe it or not. So much of what I do is creating that look. So I'd love to show you guys that commercial and end with that. It's a really fun, fun gig. All right, I have no more time, but thank you guys so much for coming. I threw a lot of you guys at you, but I hope you guys have a great rest of your show. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Dixie Dixon.